Hello again, good people. This is Phil Schneider with another episode of Why Do We Say That? I think this is episode 5, although I'm not keeping track too well. Today we're going to talk about why it gets my goat. And we're going to say where the man as a hatter came from, and to get the sack. Okay, let's start off with our sponsor. The show is brought to you by the letter T and the words Tingle and Terpsichord. Once again, if you can use both of them in one sentence, you get five bonus points. Now on to It Gets My Goat. Uh, my mother never owned a goat, to the best of my knowledge. But nevertheless, someone was always taking it. Her speech was sprinkled with the phrase, That really gets my goat. But why do we say that? Why does getting a goat mean that someone has succeeded in getting me irritated and just a bit angry, and upset too? Well, the phrase goes back to a practice that is not well known now. Thoroughbred race horses are notoriously high-strung and nervous. It was discovered that keeping a quiet, docile animal in the same stall with the racehorse tended to, well, quiet its nerve and make it calm as well, gave it a companion. Thus, years ago, it was common practice to provide a high-strung racehorse with a goat companion that would stay close whenever the horse was in its stall. The continued presence of the goat as a companion put the horse at ease. Then the bright but nasty idea arose that if someone would take the goat, that is, steal the goat, right before a major race the horse would miss its companion, become nervous, and probably lose the race. Sure enough, once the thief got a horse's goat, the horse became upset and irritable, which is where the saying, to get someone's goat came from. Now, to get the sack means to be fired, of course, uh, or to be sacked, is to be dismissed from employment, or, as is more commonly said, you're gone. These days an assembly line worker or an executive who gets the sack may receive severance pay plus a printed explanation. But as early as the 1600s, Craftsmen and artisans provided their own tools, as a rule, bringing them to the next job or building site in a sturdy sack or bag. When an employer was ready to dismiss a worker, it was common to hand him his tool sack. No explanation was necessary. The gesture meant, put your tools in the sack, Pierre, and get going, eh? Now let's continue on down the path of phrases. You know, if someone gave me the sack and got my goat, I might be mad, but I would not be mad as a hatter. To say that someone is mad as a hatter is to strongly imply that they, well, have lost contact with reality and are acting in a crazy way. Whenever I heard it, the picture of the mad hatter in Alice in Wonderland would pop into my mind, and I thought the phrase came from that book by Lewis Carroll. But it didn't. No, 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 no. It was a very common phrase in Carol's time to describe someone who was not working with a full deck, or as we would say now, reality challenged. The phrase was used because for a long time people who made hats for a living had a definite tendency to become quite crazy. Until the Industrial Revolution, Men's hats were made almost exclusively of the skins of animals, mostly beaver and rabbit. The element mercury was used extensively in the tanning process, and hat makers, handling these furs many hours a day, year after year, absorbed that poisonous metal into their bloodstream and gradually went crazy. Now that we know about the poisonous nature of mercury, modern-day milliners, or hatters, are no madder than the rest of us. But we still have that nice phrase, mad as a hatter. Thank you very much for listening, folks, hoping that you don't get the sack, or not mad as a hatter, and that nobody gets your goat. This is Why Do We Say That Podcast, and yes, I am having 
way too much fun. Bye-bye.